Over a lifetime of running, there are certain training sessions you learn that have the biggest impact on your running. Some for speed, some endurance, and some just teach you something about yourself that you didn't know before. So I want to share with you the nine running sessions that have made the biggest improvement to my running. And I'll give you the why as well. And the deal is, if you learn a new session today, consider subscribing to the channel to learn even more and take your running to the next level. Let's start at the track. So here we are at the track. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through the first three sessions, which can be track based, but you can do them pretty much anywhere. I just chose to come here because it's how I found them. And I discovered these sessions pretty early on in my training life because it was when I was training for five and 10 Ks. These are the sessions that I used very regularly to add speed into the mix and I'm certain that these made me faster. And session number one is repeats and I used a combination of 400 meter repeats and kilometer repeats when I was training. But here's the essence of the sessions. They are really good for adding speed, they're repeatable and all you do in a session, let's say, let's take for example you're training for a sub 25k, then all I'd start off doing is six lots of one kilometer repeats at just sub four minute kilometers and I'd do that kind of pacing the 400 meter repeats as well but maybe I'd do 10 11 12 of those instead they're just so good for getting speed endurance so the keys to this kind of workout is that you make sure that your pace on your last kilometer is the same as on your first you don't go all out on that first one same as the 400s you make sure you have ample recovery and you understand that these are not max efforts but you can use kilometer repeats for 5k up to marathon training it's like the Swiss army knife of training and I definitely recommend it link to that video in the description and perhaps my favorite session of them all in the early days is a session where the volume gradually goes down and the intensity goes up as it goes past it and it's 1 800 2 600s 3 400s 4 300s 5 200s all with a walking rest and the, the theory is that the 800 is at around your 5k race pace and you get faster as you go down in terms of the repeats and the thing is with this one it's brutal but it makes you feel fast and it makes you move fast and that's why I really like it. I mean I literally used to call this one the brutalizer and until you get to the 300s the recovery is quite a generous 200 meter walk but it does mean that you've got to keep the quality high in the efforts that you're doing and again full session for this video is linked in the description and the final session that you can do on the track or you can do anywhere and it's brilliant because it's 30 minutes regardless so you can do it if you're time crunched you can do it in a recovery week or you can do it if you just want a punchier session as I say it's 30 20, 20, 10. So all you're really doing is running easy for 30 seconds, running at tempo for 20, and then running 5K race pace for 10 seconds. Repeat five times, walk two minutes, repeat five times, walk two minutes, repeat five times. Make sure there's a warm up and cool down on either side and Bob is your uncle. But what I really like about this session is that it has been proven that if you do this regularly, you will get faster because they tested it on Danish 1500 meter runners. So I call this one a bang for the buck type session. It is fast, furious, but really good for you. Link in the description. And I've moved from the track to the not road, but this is actually the path where I do most of my mid-length runs on, so I thought I would take you here to explain the next three sessions that have really affected and improved my running. And the first one is, pyramids. These sessions are awesome but they're also so simple because it wouldn't matter if you're training for a 5k, a 10k, a half marathon or a marathon, you can adapt the pace to suit the pyramid but essentially it works as you do one minute, then two minute, then three minute, then four minute, then five minute, then four, three, two, one minutes at your goal pace. So let's say you're training for a 5k, you do it at goal 5k pace. But if you were training for a marathon, you do it at marathon pace and the rest is always half of what you just work so let's say you were on the three minute effort for 5k you would then jog for one minute 30 before you go for the four minute effort which you then jog for two minutes it's so simple but it's so effective such a good one that can be done anywhere and that can be done on the track but I prefer to do these ones out on the road or out on the river path. And next up's my favorite tempo session. So let's just say this one is running at about a seven or eight out of 10 sweet spot or lactate threshold. But again, it's a really great session to train anywhere through 5K to marathon. All you gotta do is pick a pace. Now let's say for me, my goal was to run four minute kilometers in a marathon. Then after a good warm up, what I'd do is I would go out and I would run 350 for a kilometer and then 410 so I'm not running way beyond my abilities I'm running hard but then I'm not running too slow either I'm running 410 which doesn't allow you to recover enough it allows you to recover 
and also it doesn't push you too much but it pushes you so you're just playing over and under the pace that you eventually want to run and you can adapt that again to any pace and if you do triathlon by the way that one's excellent for helping you with triathlon because it really teaches you to suffer a little bit like you do on the run after the bike again link to this video in the description and the sixth session and the final one of this part is where would we be without a little bit of fartlek training which is just enjoyable to say but it's essentially Swedish for speed play you're just messing around with your paces or elevation or even surface and this session is called a monogetti fartlek or mono fartlek and the genius of it is that regardless of your ability level you can do this to suit you and from memory you'll have to watch the video for me to get it exactly right but it goes as two lots of 90 seconds with a 90 second easy run then three lots of 60 seconds with 60 seconds easy run four lots of 30 seconds four lots of 15 seconds with the equal amount of recovery run and if you're an experienced runner obviously you're going to run the efforts harder and you're going to run the recovery run that little bit harder so any ability level can do this run and it's just fun to mess around with your speed a little bit have a little bit of fun out there and once again video link in the description I'm, I, I'm getting bored of my own voice but it's all gonna be there all right off for the best base runs section and here we are for the last three sessions, which I'm gonna classify as trail or long run. And I live in Bangkok. There are no hills, which poses a little bit of a problem because the first session I wanna talk about is hill reps. But bear with me on this one because these are an amazing session that you definitely need to add in if you wanna get faster and actually run with a better efficiency and, and technique. So I absolutely love this session. All you gotta do is you've gotta find a hill that you can't run up within one minute of a decent gradient and then after a good warm up, you just run up it for a one minute. When you get to the top, you turn around, you jog or walk back down, and when you get to the bottom, you turn and you go up for 30 seconds a little bit harder, stop, turn around, come back down, and you repeat that as many times as you can within an hour's session if you include a 10 minute cool down as well. It's just so simple, but the beauty of hill running is it adds intensity without adding speed, so it's a little bit safer and also it really, really helps work on your technique as well. Absolutely love this session to bits, just don't get a chance to do it because I live in a flat Bangkok. And the second session is it's less of an actual session and it's more of a go out and run some trails. I can't tell you how much my running came on when I started to run trails more regularly, when I started to move from the road to, I used to live on the North Down, so I was able to just kind of go out of my house and straight away I was on some monster hills. And the beauty of trail running is it works loads of different muscles in loads of different ways. You've got the muscles that propel you up, you've got the muscles that push you forward on the flat, and of course you've got the muscles that help decelerate when you're descending, as well as all the little stabilizer muscles around your core that you use to negotiate stones or mud or tree roots or uneven surfaces in general so I can't speak highly enough of adding trail running into your regimen when you're training and also it's a lot kinder on your joints than running on the road as well so it's a no-brainer and my final session and probably my favorite current session because it's marathon specific is the long run but with hotspots. And what I mean by that is every Sunday morning, we tend to drive to a university campus near where we live and we do a long run of up to 35 kilometers. But within that, we add hotspots because what we want to do is we want to be running at our kind of goal marathon pace within that session. So let's just say, for example, I want to be running, or I was when I was training for the marathon in Bangkok, I wanted to be running four minutes 15 roughly per kilometer. Now my easy runs were around 4.30 to five per kilometer while I'm running around Tamasat. But what I would do is add in hotspots of sometimes five kilometers at 4.15 per kilometer, or I'd build up to one lot of 10 kilometers or two lots of five and disperse it through the session. So you can play around with where you put those hotspots. You could do four sets of five kilometers. It really is up to you and you can choose what pace you're doing it at depending on what you're training for. But I really love the concept of mixing the pace up within the session, but none of the pace being too overwhelming or too fast so that it's all manageable. And those are my nine favorite sessions that over the years I've learned and I've incorporated into my training that have 100% made me a faster runner, a stronger runner, a better runner in general. And that's that. 
for nine sessions that definitely made me a faster runner. And if that brought some value to you, then don't forget to consider subscribing. And I'm gonna link this video here, which I think is also gonna bring you value, which is the 10 things that runners should know, but probably don't. And next week's video is the top 10 things that runners can do to be faster without having to train. So hopefully that's convinced you to stick around. It's a no-brainer. I'll see you Sunday.